Hello, in this video we'll talk about some previous year questions from the topic cell signaling. This particular topic is very easy to moderate and each year reliably questions are asked from this topic. Question distribution is sometimes in MCQ and sometimes in MSQ. So it's a sure shot topic that you should know before you go for the IIT jam examination. Now let us quickly start the question answer solving. In 2021, they have given a question saying cyclic AMP acts as a second messenger for which of the signaling pathway? Retinoic acid, cortisol, prostaglandin, epinephrine. From the number you can understand this is a MSQ type question. So the correct answer here would be epinephrine as well as prostaglandin. So epinephrine everybody would have guessed because epinephrine acts via beta adrenergic receptor and that leads to many changes. Anyway, the video is provided in the I button. You can take a quick look. But prostaglandin, people would miss out. Prostaglandin is actually derived from arachidonic acid, but still it utilizes G protein coupled receptor for its signaling. So, and, and it leads to cyclic AMP generation. Whereas retinoic acid and cortisol would not be the proper answer because both of them use an intracellular receptor, not a G-protein coupled receptor system. They don't activate adenylate cyclase as well. Next, in 2020, they have asked which of the following gases function as a signaling molecule in human nervous system. Options are nitric oxide, carbon monoxide, helium, argon. Correct answer here would be nitric oxide and carbon monoxide. If you want to know how nitric oxide works like a signaling molecule or how gases can work like a signaling molecule, click on the exciting video in the I button. Let me tell you the importance of looking at previous year question. Once you know the previous year question, you have it in your mind that what is the difficulty level, how much the depth you need to delve in and how you can strategize around that. So obviously, An Academy has a batch known as Legacy Practice Batch, which covers all the previous year question solving for all the subjects. So don't forget to check out that batch. You can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount. Recently, An Academy has started a particular uh, test series known as BSC test series, or this is called 50-50 test series. Here there would be 50 questions, there would be 90 minutes, and this is totally free. Even if you are not a Plus subscriber, you can give this test. This test would happen on 13th of Jan, 27th of Jan, starting from 2 p.m. Now here let me tell you, using my code AP10 you can get a free access and you can give this code. So enroll right now. All the links are provided in the description box. All you need to do is just download the Unacademy app and then use my code AP10 to get a free access. Register right now because the date is third 13th Jan that means two days away. So hurry up and don't miss your chances S Similar kind of uh, full length tests are also Coming up in an academy. I'll keep you guys posted But my courses are right now there in during in this lockdown these courses would be really beneficial for your preparation So don't forget to check out all these links and join my classes Okay in IIT Jam 2018, they have asked a question, which of the following statement is correct for G-protein coupled receptor signaling? And they have descriptions about G-protein coupled receptor signaling. So this is very simple kind of description. This is GPCR contains seven transmembrane region, which is correct. GPCR are linked with heterotrimeric G-protein containing alpha, beta and gamma subunit. That is correct. In absence of GPCR interacting ligand, alpha subunit of G-protein is bound to GTP and it is complex with beta gamma subunit. This is incorrect, right? So if you have read this question properly, the correct answer here would be option A and B. And see, this is another MSQ question. So what I wanted to point out that these MSQ questions are relatively easy. So you would get more marks if you like revise this cell signaling part very nicely. In order to revise cell signaling, you need a playlist, compact playlist that can help you to revise within some hours. Okay, you got it. It's in the I button. Okay, let me quickly remind you that this is the G-protein coupled receptor signaling scheme where be it G-alpha, be it uh, G-alpha Q or G-alpha S, always ligand binding leads to GTP exchange and that lead to activation of the G-protein coupled receptor signaling. So there is, it's like a two alternative state, a on state 
sorry a off state where it is bound to gdp and on state where it is bound to gtp and there are molecules like kf and gap gif means guanosine nucleotide exchange factors and gap means gtp as activator proteins that help to toggle between these switch gap would try to hydrolyze gtp gif would try to replace gdp and put gtp in that uh, position okay next question is from probably rtjam 2018 the binding of hormone to its receptor activates adenylate cyclase through stimulatory G protein. If due to a mutation, G protein binds due to not uh, uh, binds, but not only hydrolyzes GTP. So I mean, sorry, sorry. So here they wanted to know what happens if there is a mutation and G protein is not able to hydrolyze its GTP. What would be the consequence? So the overall consequence would be adenylate cyclase would be constitutively active. That's the answer so you know so this g alpha subunit binds to gtp and it activates adenylate cyclase so if the gtp cannot be hydrolyzed so there would be too much of cyclic amp production right similar thing happens in case of cholera toxin cholera toxin actually adp ribosylate g protein and thereby locking it into an active conformation this leads to huge increase in cyclic amp in the cells lead to hyperactivation of the protein kinase a and it leads to opening of the CFTR channels. By the way, if you want to revise cell signaling or any topics, I have a bunch of uh, dynamic flashcards that are present in my animated biology with Arpan channel. So go there and watch these uh, dynamic flashcards. These are really quick way in terms of revision. Which of the following characteristics of receptors uh, for lipid soluble hormones again this is a msq type question asked in iit jam 2017 the correct answer would be b c and d so what they have said in b the fun they function as homodimer or heterodimer that true that is true in a moment it would be clear they are mostly located in the cytoplasm or nucleus that is again clear they are transcription factors so let us try to understand so this is how the steroid hormones and the thyroid hormones work they work via intracellular receptor as the name suggests, this receptor is not present on the surface but present inside the cell. It has this kind of domain structure where you can see there are two transactivated domain, DNA binding and ligand binding domain. Now, steroid hormones are sequestered by HSV90 molecules in the cytoplasm. When steroid hormone binds, it translocates into nucleus and activates gene genes uh, target genes so you can see the steroid hormone receptors are physically located in the cytoplasm so the in the question they have asked cytoplasm or nucleus so which receptors are present in the nucleus all the time like thyroid hormone or retinoic acid that has been asked in iit jam 2021 so these receptors are actually heterodimer like thyroid receptor and rxr retinoic acid receptor and rxr these kind of heterodimeric compositions are always bound in the dna and whenever there is a ligand input, these there could be transcriptional activity with the help of this receptor. Actually, these receptors are normally bound with repressor, but upon ligand binding, they switch to activator and thereby activating char target genes. Then they have talked about apoptosis. Uh, in this video, we are not really focusing on apoptosis because it's not really from um, uh, cell signaling, but overall, apoptosis is an important topic. Okay. Then question number 36, again you can see it's a MSQ question. The intracellular messenger formed by the activation of phosphoinositide cascade are phosphatidyl inositol 45 bisphosphate, inositol 145 triphosphate, diacylglycerol, inositol 4 phosphate. The correct answer is IP3 and DAG. Right? Similar type of question was asked in RDGM 2018. Which of the following statements are true for phosphoinositide cascade? Phospholipase A catalyzes cleavage of pip2 generation of ip3 transiently increases cytosolic calcium calcium facilitated the activation of protein kinase c dag always activates protein kinase a correct answer here would be option b and c look at one particular trend always they are asking cell psych, uh, cell signaling related questions in msq so how many msqs you have faced so far so many right so obviously if you have a good knowledge about cell signaling, you can easily gain these mass marks and you can make a difference in your exam. 2015, there was a question, it's a MCQ question. The cellular organelle which functions as a store for calcium is all of these. So the 
intracellular calcium storage is in the endoplasmic reticulum. So let me remind you that in GQ signaling what happens, G alpha subunit activates phospholipase C which cleaves PIP2 and leads to production of IP3. IP3 binds to IP3 receptor on the endoplasmic reticulum and lead to calcium outflux and this calcium actually activates protein kinase C as well as calcium activates many other kinases. Then question number 13 says the preferred ligand for SH2 domain is serine phosphorylated peptide, tyrosine phosphorylated peptide, glucose 6-phosphate, cyclic AMP and the correct answer would be phosphotyrosine residues. So there are adapters such as GRB2 in MAP kinase signaling pathway which has SH2 domain and SH2 domain recognize phosphotyrosine residues. So GRB2 has a SH2 domain which can recognize phosphotyrosine residues. So overall we can understand the majority questions are asked from G protein couple receptor. Types of G protein couple receptor like GS signaling scheme, GQ signaling scheme. They have asked question from MAP kinase pathway and nuclear receptor family and also they have asked question from enocyclic GMP pathway. So these are the important signaling pathways that you need to revise and all these videos are linked in the i button. Check it out right now. So my courses are there in an academy. Both special classes and plus courses are there. Both are really useful. If you wish to check out the spe special courses, you don't have to pay money. You just use my code AP10 to unlock these special classes and there are bunch of bunch of flashcards that would really help in your preparation. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in next video.